Mary Star Ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Kiev. Star Ladder Season 8, the LAN Finals continue now. It's time for our second game in this best of three, Sigma versus Navi. Sigma leading 1-0. And convincingly, I must say. Very convincingly. And Navi just didn't really stand a chance past 20 minutes. Um, curious to see what they're going to do this game, though. Yeah. And Navi, as you like, as you said before, they like to throw his curveballs. That was definitely a curveball with the awfully Naga Siren. And, like, the, I mean, I know you mentioned Puppy likes to play his Venno a bit differently, but... That was a really passive Venno. Normally, at least see like a smoke gank or a little harassing lane, but they just need a secure yeah. farm for Havos, though. Yeah, I think Havos doesn't do very well without farm. I mean, as do as don't most carry players, but some are better at recovering than others. And, and he was also a carry that needs the farm really badly. Like Life Stealer can fall behind a bit, but until Gyro gets BKB that game, he's just food. Mm. So that really hurt. But uh, heading into game two, the. Players are loading in now, so hopefully we'll hop in the draft soon. But if you're Sigma, obviously you can't expect to get the Bane Marana combo again. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but you can't plan on it. So if you can't get that, what's your next plan? To be honest, I don't actually know what else they're like known for besides Bane and Marana. They run Sark sometimes, but usually yeah. it's on it's on Miggle. And then I mean, obviously. Um, Foss, or Fada plays a very nice puck, Shadow Fiend too, right. but that's not really like a general playstyle for a team. It's just one hero. So as far as their general playstyle goes, it usually seems like it's relatively the same thing. Not really cheesy stuff, just out trying to outplay your opponents in the first 15 minutes of the game and then just going from there. Yeah, generally we, we don't see see them pick a whole lot of like team fight heavy lineups or like really strong pushing lineups. Mm -hmm. It's more of like lane dominators, really good gankers, right? You know, tempo controllers who can just snowball really hard. Like and Clark. like pseudo late game, like Potom. She's yeah. not the best late game, but if the other teams under farm, then she'll shine. This is not a team that's going to pick like a, a Phantom Lancer and a Prophet and you know go AFK Rat Dota or mm. something. They're not. I mean, we have not seen. They do play Wisp occasionally, but it's not like Fnatic where it's like, okay, if you leave Wisp in the pool, they're going to go Tiny Wisp. If you leave Bane in the pool, however... They're going to go Bane Murata. <laughs> That's for sure. And on that note, we do hop inside the draft now. Once again, the Invoker ban. I think it's Vada that keeps... That plays it. I was looking at one of the matchups earlier, and it seemed like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Vada. Yeah, so, I mean, is it is it that amazing, though? Couldn't they just pick, like, OD? OD's, like, okay. I shut him down. It's like, eh. I mean, it's just going to be a farm war at that point. Yeah. But he uh, Invoker just offers so much more to team fights. That's true. And ganking. And just a more flexible hero, I think. Well, they do ban it out. And the first pick from Navi, this time it will be a Visage. Last time they got Venno and Visage. What does Sigma do? The Bane Marana... Sorry, the Bane's not there. He did get banned out this time. But the Marana's still available. Mm -hmm. Well... Will they go for it? Venno Marana? Wouldn't be a bad opening. Venno is interesting. Venno and Visage, I mean, they're... Do you think they really wanted the Venno, or did they not want Navi to have that combo? I'm not particularly sure. I think Venom is a really, really good support um, because this play wards. I mean, first off, they persist, persist through death. Secondly, they're not affected by magic damage, too. And thirdly, you don't have to, like, be there to do anything. Like, you can just set them up at a tower, and it just makes base and tower defense incredibly useful, and you can farm with them. So they're really good at uh, keeping control and getting back into the game, too. They're, like, a pretty big momentum shift. They, you don't actually, like, see them do that much, but if you're actually, like, playing against it, you're like, damn, those wards are annoying. Especially with the slow now. Yeah. Ever since he added the slow. Before that, I didn't feel like they were that And they do a lot of damage, too. It, yeah. it, you don't, like, see it because your HP just, like, slowly ticks down over 20 seconds. It, you don't see it at first, but after the fight's gone for five seconds, you're like, wait, where the <laughs> hell did my health go? Yeah. What the hell, man? What the wow, fuck? Wow, they're doing... A very similar um, Dragon draft to what what Navi did, but Navi they like drafted these two heroes except they didn't take down any towers early. 
If you take Venomancer and DK, you have a very, very strong level 6, level 7. We're going to siege your towers, and you, and you better do something about it sort of lineup. Now, seeing a Dragon Knight, if Navi want to punish this, the Dragon Knight is a decent solo mid. You can't really crush him. Seconds, like, he'll still get his levels. Shadow he Fiend. Push. But you could go like a Shadow Fiend at OD and just look to completely yeah, or even out, far, out far. Navi him. could do that. Yeah. And I feel like that's more Navi's style, is give Dendi a really good matchup that he can dominate. Not that he played a great DK last game. I don't. I feel like Dendi was the most solid player on the team in mm -hmm. game one. But there's only so much you can do on that hero. Yeah, he's more of a flashy, flashy mid player. Yeah, he needs a flashier mid hero, I think. Storm, because they just OD. they just didn't move around the map at all. And if you're not going to move around the map at all, and your and your heroes aren't that good at reacting to ganks, then like I mean, they're not going to be able to just like completely swing the fight around. So yeah, eh, eh, yeah, eh, yeah, yeah. We'll see. It's the lukewarm feeling. Navi really taking their time with this next pick. As for Sigma, I feel like this is also they just don't want Navi to have the Dragon Knight. That's got to be a factor here as well. Is Dragon Knight's really like risen to speaking you have to have to ban him early. Yeah, I mean speaking of heroes that are just annoying to play against, Dragon Knight's also very annoying to play against because that freaking stun is always there. It's pops the ult, suddenly you're Dragon Tail and you just die. And it's instant. Yeah, you can't dodge it. And on top of that, there's a hundred poison damage. Ten seconds remaining. Yep, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. And it only lasts like five 45 seconds. seconds. <laughs> only 45. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a spammable. It's a lifetime in Dota. It's a spammable Beastmaster Roar. Sure, it doesn't get through BKB, but who cares? It's instant. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's really good. It's good. Cost less mana. Yeah. And uh, Slark will be the choice. So now be going to. Navi they run a mid. They're doing the same thing that Sigma did last game, which is Slark versus DK. And Navi's doing the same thing that. Or Sigma's doing the same thing that Navi did. You know, to be honest, I mean, as well as. Fata played. Dendi did not lose mid. He was equal. No, it was equal in mid. Yeah. The mid was completely equal. What changed the game was that Fata was like given opportunities by Navi, especially that dive top, to snowball. Mm -hmm. They gave him two free kills with that overextension. So I think that matchup's okay either way. Oh, it's good. It's, it's more good about both heroes. It's more about the rotations that decide the game. Right. That game was a very non support mid. Like they just continue like I don't know. Sigma just has so much control on the sidelines. It was actually very strange to yeah. see that. And now the tree banned out by Navi. Not wanting to deal with Goblack's uh, parting gift to Sigma, as it were. And a Timber Saw comes off the board. So looks like Sigma is expecting a solo mid Slark. I mean, occasionally we've seen him off lane. Ice 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 has had some success He's with that. Solo. He can be uh, safe lane carry, too. Yeah. We've seen mixed results with that. Is he a Havosiro? Could be. You can dive really far. I haven't seen him play it though. The tail. I've never. I seen think him play. he has a decently high skill cap. Like using dark pack at the right time is not the easiest thing in the world, especially against instant stuns. Yeah, if you use it too early, then you don't have it when the stuns come out. And if you try to hold it too long, then you just, you get, just stunned. get stunned and you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll have to see. Uh, they're still an abandon in the pool for Navi if they want to ban that. I mean, they did last game, but no, they'll ban the gyro here. So they don't want to get five man by Sigma. It seems. Mm. And it's going to be a complete role reversal. Is that how we're going to go for this? Slark's pick? very vulnerable to five man, though. Yeah. Visage decent in five he's, man. He's really he's really good in five man. He's I don't know if he's as good as Veno. That's true. Just run in suicide bomb with your ult and <laughs> and watch their HP tick down. Just keep dropping Orth in the meantime. I, I remember uh, Zyori did an interview with Notel for Dota Radio, and he was just like. This hero is like a fucking nuclear bomb in a team fight. You just walk in and, you know, what other support does like 3,000 team fight damage when his ult's level 3? Yeah, you need, you need a pipe yeah, for insane. that hero once, once he gets leader. Or BKBs. BKBs work too. But Navi, really good pick off lineup. A uh, lot of burst damage for them. And we'll have to see what Sigma's next ban is. Probably. Oh, they go back for an OD. So are maybe they're not expecting a solo mid Slark. It's, I mean, Slark's a flexible hero, though. You can place yeah. him anywhere. So it's it's okay. I, I, the thing is, I just don't know who plays it on Na'Vi, though. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because I didn't think that Funic would be playing Naga Siren last game either. I do kind of like the OD ban here, though, because that's a bad matchup for Dragonite. And OD mm -hmm. will get a lot of farm there. Yeah, it really is. And, I mean, there's still, there's still things like Shadow Fiend that you mentioned, though, but he's very vulnerable to being ganked. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a super passive farming Venom. Yeah. I don't think Sigma's Venom will... Be. I, I, I think that's a key point here is I don't think this Venom is going to be like Puppy's Venom. Whether it works or not, 
I expect more early aggression and pressure. Navi's almost out of reserve time, too. They only have three seconds left on reserve, which you can't actually see on our current overlay. Yeah, they have three seconds of reserve, 40 seconds on pick time. And we'll patiently wait for Sigma's next pick. So Sigma... It's, I'm, I'm surprised that they're all not gathered around their captain. Mm -hmm. uh, when you watch some of the other teams draft, they all huddle around, and they all look like they're contributing. But Navi looks like they're just letting Puppy do his own thing, looking like he's asking questions now and then. Same with Sigma. They're just like, eh, we trust in our captain. It's like, wake me up when the draft's over. That's what Havosta said. <laughs> That's what I did when I played. I was just like, just you know what I like, you know you know what you, you want to run, and just pick me something. Yeah. And that was it. It's less stressful that way. Yeah, and like Some, sometimes there's something to be said for just like having one person make the decisions. Because mm -hmm. then he, sometimes you'll have that situation where like people have really strong, conflicting opinions, and then it ends up like undermining having a coherent plan for the draft. You need confidence. Your confidence needs ca uh, your captain needs confidence, and, and the team needs to have confidence in the captain. Right. And so it, it is a wisp. A bottom too. Okay. Bottom, no surprise. Sigma loves their bottom. Yeah, but were they were they banking on the Wisp pick here? Mm. Something Navi run occasionally, but they are not a team that you know goes Wisp with impunity. Very situational. Uh oh, the uh -oh. five man. Slark Wisp both bad against five man. Visage, yeah, pretty good. Not amazing. But not if he's not level six though. If he's not level six, he is just. Ugh. Uh, this DK Pugna combo, it's I, scary. I'm surprised we don't see it more because it's it's so strong. It 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 really is. I think. I think All you have to do is like get to level six or seven and just start a moving at towers and those those class. two heroes just do way too much damage to towers like one hit one hundred damage and one cast from Pugna it's like and he's got what is it four point one intelligence gate per level something like that yeah and so he always has mana it's it's slightly strong okay bristleback so it's most likely go mm, you still don't know with what? Navi's lineup right it could be offline bristleback could be offline Slark could be offensive tri lane. Yeah, Bristleback. Interesting choice this game. I feel like he's also not a good five man hero. I feel like Sigma can deal with Bristleback. They've got a lot of lockdown here, a lot of a lot of damage. Yeah, they can kite him really well with Decrepify. You won't be taking quill damage, just gale him and run, or you just dragon tail him and go to work. This is life steal. Just life yeah, this from Bristleback him. could get very hard to kill though with Tether. That's something we have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Overcharge and Tether. They don't really have a good way to like reach the Wisp either, too. That's like, true. Unless they get like a shadow blade, or they're using moonlight shadow. Sigma's initiation, or like is, walks into a DK stun. Yeah, but well, that'll that'll get you every time. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that stun. Navi just kind of relaxing here as Sigma debates their final pick of the draft. Wow, uh, they ban a tiny, so I guess they considered that okay. Well, Slark could be mid, Bristleback could be off lane, and they could still pick another carry. I don't think anyone would disagree with the tiny ban here. I mean, it would be a it's a fairly greedy draft, but it's the best Wisp partner in this patch, it seems. I think Tiny's really underrated, actually. Yeah, he does. I mean, sure, like, everyone knows Tiny for his crazy backdoor, you know, huge, huge club, Aghanim Scepter, just, you know, kill your base in 20 seconds. But mm -hmm. he's got great burst damage. Yeah, One Scepter, of the best gankers out there. Scepter is just such a cost-efficient item for him. Yeah. It gives him, like, Everything. A, a ton of splash. Yeah, it gives him Siege. So he's, like, Demolish and Battle Fury in one item. Like, look at Anti-Mage. He gets a Battle Fury. It's like a Battle Fury that also gives you a <laughs> shitload of HP and, and mana as well. Yeah. It's Pretty good. It's insane. And the coolest part is that you wield a big ass tree. Yeah. And if you don't scale up, grow. He looks hilarious. I, lo I yeah. I <laughs> love level one tiny. It's like lugging this gigantic club around. It's so it, funny. It should work on him. I I feel like it should work. You should have an option to have that model anyway. That's so we're so going it. with the very s similar to a lot of the game one picks. I think every single one of these heroes were in game one except for the pugna. Frost armor really good against uh, bristleback. Decent versus slark. Yeah, pretty good versus slark. I mean, sure, there's still a lot of quill damage wow. here. Going and with a Nyx. So I think that if Sigma gets, like, one tower early and, like, three kills, they can just barrel down as five. A, and just a click at their towers. Right. Spam your blast. Drop the ward. And you can't dive this team once they then have Then they say frost. they hated cheese. I guess this isn't cheese. This, this is just... This is, like, cheesy. It's not fully... Anything with Pugna is cheesy. Yes. I agree. And Venno and Dragon Knight. They have, I think... 
what what other heroes are better at tower sieging than these three? I think this is like the tiny cool death prophet later on with a lot of farm maybe, but shadow shaman is okay. Yeah, but these are I'd say Pugna DK are the best because they're the most versatile. Like they siege early. Veno is too. Yeah, and Veno very versatile as well. Yeah, I would say that Sigma has a slight edge in this draft. Yeah, I, I like Sigma's draft better, mm -hmm. but Navi's draft can really snowball out of control here potentially. Yeah, but, I mean, how are you going to win a lane versus a Lich, though? It's very difficult to do that. And they have to keep down a Dragon Knight as well. Not the yeah. easiest thing in the world, especially when you don't have a range shooter to constantly keep him down. So, eh. Going to be tough. And on that note, we get ready to hop inside the game. It's Navi versus Sigma. Game number two. Winner moves on to play Alliance. Guaranteed top three. Loser drops down to play Fnatic tomorrow. Star Ladder Season 8, over 130000 U.S. dollars. At, at, at liberty for these teams to claim whoever wants it, come and get it. Well, Navi, they'll need to bounce back, take two in a row, or they will drop down. And on Navi's side, we'll introduce them now. Uh, it looks like we do have some lag or computer issues from Sigma, but uh, we'll have Dendi playing the Slarks and uh, Havost the Bristleback. This does put Kuroki onto the Wisp, Funic onto the Nyx Assassin, and bringing up the rear is going to be Puppy on the Visage. And on the side of Sigma, the laggers. The laggers. Computer freezing earth. Well, we're on camera now, so yeah. I, I can introduce it in a Hi little guys. bit. Good to have you here in Kiev. You, you happy to be here, Ben? Of course. I, I like lane tournaments. They're fun. Yeah. Especially. It's, it's like you cast enough online games and they all just kind of blur together, but mm -hmm. having. <laughs> Especially oh, one, of the, one of the best things I like about land tournament is that teams take it very seriously. Yeah. Like, it's not that they aren't experimenting. It's just that they actually give a lot of fucks. Like, usually they just yes. like, whatever. We don't care. It's like early group stage in Starlighter. We'll just... Yeah, we'll make up for it later if we yeah. throw this game. No but big this deal. is like... No stand-ins, nothing like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 Unless you have it's serious no travel it, it, it's problems. It's just not a lot of bullcrap going on at lands. No bullshit. Yeah. That's what you get here at That's what I like. That's the kind of Dota I like. <laughs> There's no room in uh, in your community. You're, you're you're policing it very well. I know. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, I think we both like Sigma's draft a bit better, mm -hmm. especially their laning stage. And I think for Navi, the much scarier snowball lineup though. If they start to win the laning stage, this is just gonna the wheels are gonna come off very quickly. No, I mean it's the same for same for Sigma's draft though. Yeah. You get a couple of towers and Wisp isn't level six. It's just going to be disastrous because relocate is going to be useless, and your five man is just really weak with a bristleback slark, Nyx, and a wisp. I guess Nyx is decent. It's he's like okay. I think the Nyx pick helps their five man a lot though, because it was really bad before that, and now it's I'd say it's decent. It's decent. It's it's all right. I wouldn't even say call it decent. The main thing they're lacking is AOE to, to stop push. Like, what do they actually? Well, have? that's the thing against. Quills. Against um, Sigma's lineup, against Venomator, even if you have AoE, you can't, still can't stop oh no. the push. Oh no, this could be bad. The Gouda start, this could be trouble. The Impale to follow. They're going to find Sokshot so off the bat. First blood to Navi. And the crowd goes absolutely bonkers. That was a fast smoke too. They smoked off the bat. They smoked from the base all the way to the top lane. Pugman's oh. a very fast hero too, but you can't compete with that Wisp move speed. And uh, we did introduce Navi on the side of Sigma. Effie Mag going to be playing the Veno. Uh, Tsakshka will be handling the safe lane Pugna. Not the start you want to have on a Pugna. Fata, that solo mid Dragonite, pass the off lane Lich, now trotting towards top, and Miguel the Marana. So in the end, Navi will transition into dual lanes, it appears. Uh, or, no, actually, it looks like a tri lane. Well, the thing is, he didn't miss any experience, so it's not that bad. Yeah, sure, he died, but. And they're tri-laning against Lich and Venno, which is a very difficult tri-lane for Navi. Even with the first blood, I, I still think it's going to be a fairly difficult lane for them. Mm -hmm. And do they do they actually go try on try? Against Lich, they say no. Let's go Let's go somewhere else. Yep, looking for that early roam. No? Or are they going top? Oh, I don't know. They're juking us. Okay. Puppy, puppy, please. <laughs> he turned around again. All right, well, whatever. They're, they're, they're going somewhere eventually. They're splitting up. Maybe one to see where the Lich is going to be first or something. And they'll part ways for now, but the middle lane, it's a role reversal here. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> it really is. Last time was dead even uh, in terms of the laning. And Dendi, I, I already very aggressive. 
Fanta seemed more content just to farm and save the aggression for the ganking stage. Mm -hmm. But in true Dendi form, he wants to win the lane at like one minute. Well, looks like Paz and Bucking Mad do not have any sentries, and they it, it was pretty clear that Navi had vision because they right clicked the creep from the fog, so they should know that they have a war like somewhere in this area. Good ward from Sigma as well, so they'll see these Navi rotations through the woods. Uh, but for now, it is a dual lane, and the Visage Puppy just off jungling, or farming bottom, I should say, doing some creep pulling. I do like the dual lane choice from Navi. Try lane against Lich Venno just is not a good idea. And it looks like Navi actually wasted two sentry wards and didn't actually get anything out of it, too. So that's a slight win for Sigma there. Really thought They really thought Sigma had like a do lane. Do you have in-game sound? Uh, I have it on. I don't, I don't hear anything in-game. No. I'm not hearing it, but I'm not sure if it's going out on the stream. Well, you want to double check with... He's on it. Oh, here it is. Okay, excellent. Oh, I don't have any, but you do, so that's good. Oh, you don't hear it? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I hear... Okay. Well, the, hopefully the stream hears it. That's what matters here. It's okay. I don't think I've missed a kill yet, in spite of knowing game zone. So we see Saksha with early boots, too, and this will allow him to put a lot of pressure on Havos as well as Kuroki. Uh, EO is not the best at zoning out and only has zero armor, so very vulnerable to right clicks. I mean, Paris doesn't have any... Oh, mid. Big Zephata. aggression from Dendi. And actually leveling Essence Shift. You don't see this very often. Almost you always it's not. the max pounce build. I hear a lot of yelling. I I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. Miguel dropped somewhat low, but not really that low. Now top lane, they're going back in. It's very confusing because they're watching the last camera and they start yelling. So I, if you're missing something, it's, it's a good way to find out. Do you think the players can hear the crowd? Oh, they can hear the crowd. I don't think they can hear Valat, though. I believe that uh, they can maybe hear him a bit over the speakers. Mm -hmm. Only really helps Navi, but he is careful about what he says. So he's not, like, announcing if they have a smoke gank. Or they are doing the really big neutral close to the middle of the map. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read a comment on a forum that uh, Starladder was Valat's big plan to, to give Navi. It's the best plan he could come up with to give Navi as much money as possible because <laughs> they've won like almost every star ladder. I thought that was pretty funny, but uh, in fact, no, Valat is not cheating for Navi. They're just really good. Well, we see these two supports trying to zone out Kuro and Havos on top, and I think it is really important to keep Kuro down, so you delay that relocate as long as possible. He does not have boots yet, but he is almost level 3. Havos, still pretty poor, brown boots and a stout shield. In the mid lane, Dendi, looks like his harass has ended because he is very low on HP, still halfway into a level 6. Just um, needs level 6. Yeah. And, oh, watching the river, Havos, big chase coming out here. So too are the spirits, now the... the Venom starting to stack up, and the chase continues. The goo, it's enough. They get the kill. Havos chases all the way, and they're loving it here in Kiev. They do pick up the kill in the Lich. Yeah, those two supports just playing very aggressively, way too far out when your Pugna's in lane farming. And yeah, Pugna's getting a lot of levels, but they need his help if they want to kill um, Bristleback. I think it's, it's Puppy just... Puppy in mid? Middle lane. Well, they might go on Fata here. Is there a level 6... On Dendi needs one creep. He really needs the HP here. And while that's happening, Kuroki's rotating through as well. Meanwhile, top lane, Havos taking some damage, forced to TP out, and will be able to get away. Good TP reaction from Havos. Yep. They don't actually have any sun in this top lane. Yeah. It's not working well. They've got the Dragon Tail. They, oh, by the way, the one lane we haven't talked about, it is an off lane Marana. Not having a very good time here. Eight and two. It's getting good levels, though. 26 and six on the Knicks. That's absolutely ridiculous. Though Visage was here earlier, and Miguel did almost die, but now yeah. it's become a 1v1. Yeah, Funnick has a poor man shield, too, so he's just not taking any damage. You can't no harass. As Mar it's, Marana's auto attack damage is not very impressive. Yep. Even 59 at this point. The Knicks is a full 10 above her. And for now, they'll go in top lane again. Havost. Wrapping around through the trees. Only level four, though. I There's just a smoke. Oh, they're waiting. They're waiting. Are they going to find Havost here? He's still chilling. Just farming the neutrals. He's going to be slowed by the ghost. The Gale. You missed the Gale. Oh, off the mark. Is it going to matter, though? Look at that damage from the Pugna. He just hits too hard, I think. But Havost stacking up the quills. Going deep for this one. 
Oh. If he had hit that KO, that would have been such an easy kill for them. Yeah. Kuro. Kuro. He does get Frost Blasted here. Probably going to go down. The Ward Slow is enough. Thoughts off the mark as well with a Breathe Fire. Not popping his ultimate. They get the Wisp. But boy, did they have to work for it. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Funic. I don't... He has a regen rune here, but he needs to pop it very quickly. Oh, gets it. Miguel in all sorts of trouble now. Montevarin going to come through, but I don't think he's got the damage. Nope. Nice regen usage, though. Very yeah. efficient. Impaled and then immediately regen. And Murana's natural reaction is just to leap, so really well played. Meanwhile, an urn has come out. Early urn for the Pugna, actually. Not rushing the mech or arcane boots. That's a little surprising, considering they haven't been able to get that many kills. Yeah, and a mech is such a game-changing item for that kind of a push lineup, and he's got to be the one who builds it. If they wait for Lich to build it, it's really going to delay their their aggression. Mm -hmm. Pugna topping the CS boards right now with 43 last hits. And Dendi ooh. diving deep here mid. They want to go on Fata the leap. The latch is there and slowly chipping away, but Murana's TP'd in. Backup has arrived, but is it enough? Fata low. Fata dead. Kuroki will be the trade. Puppy may fall as well. It's a two for one. Not a good trade at all for Navi. And they invested a lot for that kill. Yep, Dragon Knight knowing that he was dead. Turned around and got some more damage on them before he fell. Oh, Paris is going to die on top. Diving onto the, the Pugna. He's got stick charges here, but no life drain, unfortunately. Or he could probably just man mode Havos. Havos spamming quills, hoping to get lucky. He's going to hit him once. One more quill. He gets to crap himself. Oh, boy. Havos. Havos, what you doing? There's a dragon tail here. Breathe fire. <laughs> See you, Havos. Oh, that's where the urn comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was... I, I thought he was going to run in a little bit more. And then he, he all he needed was one more quill stack. Havos would never turn down that opportunity for a kill. <laughs> I feel like a, a lot of players would have just backed there, but not Havos. He dives deep for that one. We haven't actually seen Funic rotate too much. He is level 6 with... It's level 7, rather, with Arcane Boots 8 minutes in. So he's had a fantastic start. Yeah, and Blink Dagger isn't terribly far off for him. Could have it by, like, 12 minutes or so at this rate. Fado waiting mid for Dendi. But he knows. Yeah, hiding in the trees. Dendi wants to get that Shadow Dance regen, and he'll get it now, but... This is where the drag. I mean, it goes back to the Dragonite just being very hard to kill. Like, sure, they killed him, but they had to invest so much to bring him down. And then the fight just turned around mm -hmm. when they ganked him earlier. So I feel like if you're the Slark, you'd much rather be hunting other prey. But the problem is Sigma's not giving them a whole lot of openings. We're yeah. not seeing Sigma dive the way that Navi did in game one. Yeah, Lich pulling the lane back on um, top. Fada with a couple of runes and good lane control in mid. Uh, he's like pretty close to his tower all the time in Migo on bottom with Leap. And he does not overextend very often either. Yeah, and he is getting a lot of experience out of this offlane. Sure, his farm is pretty atrocious, but the levels are key here. Having the early level 6 could be a tide turner potentially for them. Now we see our Pugna did back off our Arcane Boots, and I believe the mech should be coming next. Lich not farming it, at least for like... 8-10 minutes if he tries to go for it. Here's a rotation possibly from Funic. Here's a TP. TP He's stopped. looking to kill. There's a sentry ward here in the lane, but there's no creeps to give the vision. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, actually, I think he just had a vision from the creeps because it is daytime. And he will retreat. That's a very important gank to dodge. They will waste a lot of Funic's time. Yeah, but he's still diving for this one. He's still scout, dives under the tower, doesn't find anything. And now the TP comes mid. Let the five-man commence. Let the push commence. Here it goes. Marana's here in spirit. Well, the cheese is coming. What's Navi going to do about it? Dragon form almost online, and you just keep on chipping away. Drop another blast. Hit it once or twice as the Dragon Knight. Spam your wards, which are, by the way, level three. And Next wave, it's probably going to die. Yeah, unless Navi decide to really force the fight. No Vendetta here, and let's see, is Sigma prepared? Yes, they are with a sentry in the lane, so there won't be any Nyx surprises. I think they need Havos in the front line, though, or else they the do have a gonna fall. They do have a glyph. Not going to use it, and the tower falls to the Pugna. You know, that's the worst thing about playing against Pugna, is you can't deny towers against that hero. It's, it's pretty so much incredibly impossible. difficult. He does too much damage, it's really hard, and immediately Sigma rotate top. So like you said, they get one tower, a few kills, they're actually not really ahead that much in terms of kills, but gold experience starting to tip their way, and it's time for them to push the tier one top. Navi, where's the trade? 
they're not really getting a trade at all. CS still quite even. And across the board, just losing ground. Yep, they have a DD on Pugna too, so this tower is going to drop pretty fast. And, and then, they're and only then four are probably just going to go bottom. Yeah. Shortly Why after. Why not? This. What's stopping you? Well, Wisp not level 6 yet. He's still level 5. Visage is level 7, though. And he. Done on the Havos. Big die. But the familiars are here. And the backup comes from the Wisp, keeping him alive for now. The tower, low, but not dead yet. The Nyx is going to fall. Funic, first one down. And now Havos could be next. No. Still alive. Puppy doing all kinds of damage. He's an artillery cannon here. They picked off two. They do lose the tower, however, going to the dire side. But Sigma needed a sentry under the tower to prevent that Nyx's, Nyx initiation. And they also chose to go on the Bristleback with the DK stun. Not the best idea, and especially when he's tethered up. And the Wisp, yeah. The Wisp backing him up as well. Yeah, it just not a great uh, fight by them. But they still did manage to get the tower. I felt they could have just sieged the tower. They didn't yeah, have to die for kills. That's really the strength of the Venom Ward. Because you want them to fight under the massive Venom Wards. And also run right into you for Poison Nova, which, by the way, is now online. So the team fight continues to get stronger here. And, uh, well, the key item's not out yet. It will be the Dragonite building the mech. So something we have seen from Sigma before is actually uh, Fata will go for it. And he is going to do it this game. Freeze the Pugnup to go for a point booster, tanking up a bit. And it's okay on Dragonite when you have Arcade Boots on your team. And he does have Bottle as well, so Mana should not be an issue. It will somewhat limit his ability to transition into a carry role, but eventually you can catch up. Yep, Mirana actually very poor too, not even Power Dreads yet. And it looks like this tower is going to go down uncontested and probably not uh, yet another uh, free tower for Sigma. Wisp is one creep away from oh level no. 6. They might lose their Pugna here though. Familiar's on pers in hot pursuit. They'll head south. No, they found Fanta. Who's found who? Dragon being pursued by the Familiar's one stun. Two stuns. Now Denny leaps, but the stun is there from Fanta. Turns it around. Dives on the puppy. Funix here as well. Dodging the impale. Really nice play from Fanta. They just can't bring him down. Mighty was stuck too. And mi Mighty go for more. No, he'll, he'll farm some Familiar's here. Oh, Dendi got stuck. Yep. Poor Dendi. He's also going for a Shadow Blade. And Fata just... He's almost got mech. 47 CS. He's really been out farm this game, but... With the Tower Gold, it hardly matters. And do they just go Roche now? It looks like it. Three Tier 1s down. They also have the Point Ice Armor already. This will make the Roche easier. Max... Or, sorry, only three points of Plague Wards, but... We'll have the Max really soon. And an early gem from Epic Mad. So now Navi, do they contest or do they forfeit the Roche? There is a relocate online. As far as core items go, they don't have a mech, but they do have a medallion as well as a vitality booster. Dare they fight? It's gonna be I hard. I don't think so. They need Bristle there early to start getting Quill stacks up, but it looks like they're just gonna, not gonna defend it. It doesn't look like they're in position. They Wisp do have, re they do have relocate. Oh though. yeah, they're gonna, oh, they're mm -hmm. actually already. They are gonna contest it, but they're walking through the army of wards effing mad. Trying to scout out some familiars here. And Dendi, Funic, they'll just retreat out, but it's the wards. Fighting into the wards around the Roshan pit. So incredibly annoying. And with sentries, with a gem, there's no sneaking up on this Venno. You're running past the wards if you want to go for it. Familiars are in once again, but they're being farmed by Sigma. Fed, wow. actually. And 100 seconds left on the Visage. Bro, wow, that, too. That, that's probably the Roche. That's that's a huge, huge blunder for... Yeah. Uh, oh. Here comes the relocate, though, but a 3 Oh, impaled by Funic. Oh, my goodness. He's done it. What a play from him. Chain Frost bouncing to and fro. They've double bought back here. This one's turning around in a hurry for Na'Vi. Your Visage will end up going down in the end, and now Havos the man on the run. Well, they double bought back. Now the Slark buying back as well. Funic, another two hero impale. Unbelievable play from him. Now on the run, a few more right clicks, arrow, is there a carapace? Oh, he carapace dodges it too. Oh my goodness, what a player. Havost going in. What a player. Dendi charging as well, he's fighting under the ward though. Forced to leap out, Havost is low. He's getting tapped every time he quills. Awful to be a bristleback against this, uh, Pugna this game. Funny, and Roche is dead. MVP for that fight. That was an incredible three hero impale. Without that, they just get crushed in that fight. Yep. But and instead, it's not bad for Sigma. It was Sigma. a 4 for 1, actually. And they get Roshan, and they get Dendi. Eh, that's, I, think, I still think Navi comes out like just barely ahead. If those Visage Birds didn't die, it would have been really disastrous for Sigma. Yeah, and Navi just charged into the wards as well. But some of these heroes are very tanky and hard to bring down. The Slark, 
Uh, not that tanky, but elusive. And of course, your Bristleback, very, very beefy in the front lines for a Vost. Already sitting at 1300 HP with the damage block from a Vanguard. And the key thing for Sigma was this. They did not have the mech in that fight. And yeah, I'm not exactly sure why Pugna didn't go for a mech early. They, right? they like to run the Dragonite mech for some reason. I, he's, a, he's harder to kill than Pugna. I guess that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Pugna with mech will just get pushed Yo, down. Saksha in mid, though. They're going to go on him now. There's your Vendetta Impale follow. Funic is just winning this game for Navi, it feels. Yeah, we'll connect on Denny, but he should be able to get out of here. I mean, if he has a mech, he's surprised for a couple of seconds, can self decrep. Uh, I mean, I think that Pugna is just too squishy of a hero not to go mech on. Like, it's, it's well, he, nice he went tanky, though. Point booster, earn. Dendi almost gets caught out. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, point booster, earn's pretty tanky, though. Dyer's yeah. The armor from the mech is nice, though. I guess he has armor from frost armor. Eh. He gets it from the Dragon Knight, I guess, when it's popped. Yeah. Well, either way, it is their preferred style, and they're just going to barrel down mid. Forget about the fights we lost. Let's focus on the towers we're going to take, they say. They did lose the Aegis earlier, but they're grouped up mid. And suddenly a Yasha, as well as a Belt of Giant Strength on Miguel, not doing too terribly in the farm department. Actually transitioning yeah, into... He hasn't died yet, which is the big big uh, point for him. Yep. Oh, they're going to push up to T3. They want some TPs back here. They say, Navi, get back. Defend your base. And Dragonite, Pugnite, you, you can't ignore this. You have to come fight sooner rather than later. Ward's being spent. The tower's going to lose half its health just to a few volleys. Now, Sigma does have to be careful not to give away three or four kills here, but they're going to go for it anyway. They got the Dragon Telephone footing. Oh, no! Burst wow. down immediately. How did they head uphill vision? Double familiar stun, though. And from the side come the relocate. Chain Frost bouncing to Puppy. Low but not dead. A boast in the front lines. But being stunned, that Dragon Tail doing some decent work. I don't know if they want to dive him, though. There's a leap away. They don't want to fight these quills anymore, and they will look to retreat out. They'll all get out. This is not a bad fight for Sigma at all. Yeah, Funic. I mean, that's two buybacks. That's the power of Dragon Tail. He just he did not expect to get stunned uphill. I think it was a there was a Venom ward. ward up here. Yeah, they had one earlier and a Sentry Ward. Just uh, yeah, that was just nice play from Sigma. Um, they pretty much recouped all the losses from the uh, from the Roshan fight. I'm actually surprised that they chose to do that without the Aegis, considering how easily Paris died. But with Dragon Knight there in your front line. It's not easy to get a good initiate. And yeah, Funny, he's really the key hero to look for in Navi in these upcoming team fights. Because he's really their only initiator right now. I mean, maybe familiars, but that's about it. I mean, Bristleback can just run in like a man with more path and tether. Yeah, but you're not killing anyone instantly with that. You're like slowly bringing them down. You're waiting for them to get out of position. They are going to dive on Sakshka here, top lane. He's going to walk right into Dendi. Shadow bladed up. This should be an easy kill. The Impale does miss, but it ain't going to matter. Navi claim another, now leading 10 to 9. Important yeah. kill, shutting down the pug. They need to stick together, and they also need more reveal. Just because every time they're off a load, mo mostly Pugna, he just gets picked off. So Pugna is a, the most important hero on the Sigma lineup. Second to, I guess, Dragon Knight is also pretty important too. But Pugna, without that, they can't siege towers. They don't have the Pugna ward, and they need him to stay alive. He's also very far away from a scepter. Yeah, it, he's just died really quite slow. a bit this game. Oh, yeah. and four. And that's half their deaths, basically. Yeah. Really rough. And it goes back to the first blood. Havos now in trouble in the middle lane. The Gale's not going to connect, but they stun him anyway. He's tanky, but not, don't know if he's tanky enough. He is. He gets out. Beautiful play once again. Kuroki brings him home. I think they just have to let the Wisp go here, though. Yeah. Nobody else is coming. Well, Kuroki, it was a valiant effort, my friend. Doesn't even Your try. sacrifice is appreciated, says Havos. Who now goes for some very cost-effective items. Casual cloak, casual chainmail. They don't have Glyph for two minutes on Na'Vi. This is the time oh for Sigma boy. to get a tower. This and, could be bad. And now without Bristle, uh, without Bristle's Wisp, they can't really do that much. Yeah, the Bristle's not nearly as scary without the Wisp. They just need to keep on blasting, keep on sieging, bring this tower down fast, Sigma. One That's more their blast. goal here. Navi standing strong, trying to defend. The Impale, though, will come out. They've caught out the Pugna. Oh, no, he goes down. Now a good start to the fight for Navi, but will it have a good ending is the question. The Chain Frost bouncing. Still alive. No, it bounces back to Dendi. Oh, the luck. The RNG bounces too good. He'll go down. They still get a T3, though, but uh, Pugna just got caught out there. He That was a very nice initiation from Funic. He ran into the Pugna Blast with his Spike Carapace and was just able to stun lock him down from there. So Funic just playing really, really well. 
honestly the clear MVP so far for Navi in this game. Mm -hmm. Fantastic movement, great tempo control, and this is generally when Navi seems more comfortable is when Funic is in just like that pure initiator ganker role. Uh, they have a gem on Venno. He was very close to losing it. By the way, Venno going for uh, an item AUI. Curtis Ling will appreciate here. Little rod of <laughs> rod of Owie. Oh, he's it's up too. Or is he's this farmed. Or, or is this a necro book and just like a casual vitality booster? Mm, Could be. I think he. Sh I mean, the thing about it is necro already gives you HP. So if you're gonna get, if you want HP, you just go for. Yeah, that's true. If you want the Athos, you just get the Athos. Two smokes up on Effie Mad as well. And I, for Sigma, they're like one good fight away from taking base. Yep. He's not spending his money, though. Saving for buyback, maybe. I don't know. Roche is not too far off, though, for Sigma. And I imagine they may just want to wait it out. If maybe siege mid, but don't commit to it. And Yeah, this time the glyph is up. This time they don't have... Uh, or. They're fighting five strong too, Navi is. They may not realize it, but Navi actually have zero buybacks. No buyback on Visage, no buyback on Nyx, and the others cannot afford it. And here they come down middle lane. This could be disastrous though for Sigma. Overextending its Navi probably means a team wipe. Yeah, and it means next Roche too. Yeah, or at least the map control to take an easy Roche. It's going to be bad if they get Funic this from off. behind. Looking for the big impale. The familiar's lurking as well. Funic waiting to pounce. There is a gem, and he gets another amazing impale. Funic is played out of his mind in this game. Oh my goodness, what a stun coming out from him. But is it even enough? Dendi dropping low. He'll go down. It's a two for one despite the impale. And it seems Navi a bit of more than they could chew, perhaps. Miguel on the run. He gets off a starfall. Go down the wisp falls as well. Havos dropping low. Navi, no buybacks here when they really need them. The blade now coming off cooldown. He'll pop it again. Do they run or do they fight? They gale, then they retreat. These impales. Yeah, that was a was sick that a impale. Was that a four-hero impale? Three. Three-hero. Three hero. Okay. Looked like it was almost four. And another buyback from Navi. Costly, costly buybacks. D uh, Saksha has to stop getting picked off. He's way out of position in these team fights. He needs to stick closer to the Venomancer and away from Fog. He keeps he keeps dying um, to Funic over and over. And now, I, I think for Sigma, kind of crisis averted. That could have been a disastrous fight. Turns out okay. And they're still on the dire side with the map control advantage and Roshan coming up soon. Two minutes to go. Their time to shine like is almost running, over, running out, though. Like, they're strongest in between, like, I'd say 10 to, like, maybe, like, 28 minutes, I'd say. 28 to 30 minutes is roughly, like, when they're strongest in terms of their lineup. And they've gotten, like, somewhat out of it, but n not Navi has done like a really good job of holding up against a mass push in their five man with early mech and here come the necro book sigma this is the team fucky maddie hated on the midas craze then his team went mass midas in a few games when they really needed to win didn't work out they're smoking will they have better luck with the necros that fucky mad said are too cheesy we'll find out soon but it is it's it's only two necros but it it's a, a leaning towards cheese so now Puppy probably needs to scout Roshan. Navi doesn't actually know that Roshan's not up right now. So they could be doing it. But they also could be smoke ganking like they are right now. So Navi not really sure what they're up to. Well, what can they do? I mean, they don't have a great vision support. You, you, you use the Visage Bird to scout inside to see what they're That's up to. True. Oh, here they go. Arrows available, not being Dendi tossed Dendi scouts yet. it out. Oh, boy. But Marana Moonlight Shadow means that nobody's actually been... Yeah, Venomancer wasn't there. And they'll just retreat out. So both teams, they, they Crisis choose... Crisis averted for both teams. Yeah. No fighting in the end. And Roshan's still not up, but coming soon, one minute to go. Yeah, neither team wants to take the risk of dying right before Roshan. A team wipe equals Roshan, so... For Navi, lose one fight, you lose your mid-rax. For Sigma, lose one fight, you might just not be able to take this late game any longer. Right. There's a big stack taking out by Havos, though. This Bristleback's getting pretty strong. Early blade mail choice for him seems like it's working out nicely. Sigma had zero BKBs, although they are getting one soon on the Murana. Yeah, and blade mail very scary if you don't have BKBs. Now both got so much gold from that. He'll have a pipe soon if he wants to go that route. He's, he'll have Vanguard pipe and blade mail, which is insane. Pipe is, I'd say, imperative versus a Lich Pugna and a Venomancer. It's really going to cut the take the wind out of Sigma's sails if he gets a pipe. 
to this point, all their damage is really magical. They do not have any right-click items. Fata is going AC, and once he gets it, that will change, but it's not here yet. Yeah, and Marana, not any big item completed yet. Almost BKB, and Yasha on board too. Pavos just says, let's go, guys. They'll push the tier one, they'll try and take the fight to Sigma, who glyph and then defend. Meanwhile, Havos does get slowed down. He takes another blast. The tether's there, but they're going to go for the Wisp. They won Kuroki, and they found him. Now the life drain. Over the top comes the start ball. They found Havos again. I think they bring him down here. This is a disaster Oh, he got hit by an arrow. They're, go they're eyeing for the Rex right now. They know that EO already bought back, but Bristleback has his buyback. He has 1,000 gold on top of his buyback, too, and he's going to need a buyback if they don't want to lose his Rex unless there's something amazing done by Funny. Sigma going straight down the middle lane, barreling towards a Game 2 victory. There was a buyback from Avost here. Dendi TPs in, but the Rex under siege. A four step forward into an impale. It's good. Isn't it enough, though? Doesn't look like it yet. Puppy dropping low. Puppy, first man down of this fight, but might not be the last. Avost backing off now. And the familiar, great stun, but there's just no follow-up. Can they break the space, or do they just back off? That's the big they, question they kill here. kill familiars first. Oh, puppy oh, with a lot familiars. of gold. No there's resummon. He was dead anyway. There's no familiars for two minutes. That's probably Rax here. Funnick has to go on Saksha first. He went on Miggle, but Miggle's not the important hero here. He doesn't do any damage to towers. And the tower's dropping fast. They get off the impale. No! Oh. Dragon Tail! He didn't carapace the time. He ends up going down. And That's now some ninja reflexes by Fada oh there. Oh my goodness. Like, he, what in the world? I'm pretty sure he was clicking that before the fourth step. That was, that was so fast from Fada. That, he was like stunned and then... Probably would have run towards him if the four staff wasn't there. That was just ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. And really good target selection by him. He just runs straight past the bristle, goes for the wisp, kills the wisp, and then uh, Havos falls shortly thereafter without the wisp support. So they know that wisp is a high priority target on the side of Navi as well as Funic. I'd say those are the two most important heroes to kill because Dendi is pretty elusive and Havos is really tanky. On the side of Sigma, they have to kill Pugna. They've killed him six times already. He's had. What, six out of four? Like, he's had almost as many deaths as his, all his teammates combined um, at this point in the game. And for good reason, too. Navi, decent by their target selection, but just running a little bit out of steam now. And now they're one racks down, although they, although they still have their T2s, Sigma's going to have all their Necro 3s coming up. Oh, and this is such a costly team fight loss for Navi, as the Assault Caress is nearly complete. That is a game-changing item in general, and especially with all these Necros. All the additional right-click damage, Marana BKB They want to end way. the game now. Four step on the way. They may just skip the AC and, and yeah, go for the tier two bottom. Maybe not go for the win yet, but take the tier two bottom, can rotate. Why not top. go for the win? Well, you do have AC and Necro 3s coming soon. But they won the last fight before. Or do they have both Necro 3s yet? Mm, they have one Necro 3 and they have the Aegis. Oh, and a Necro 1. on. I think they want to get enough... There's no reason for them to delay this game. Desolator. Wow. He skips the BKB, goes Desolator instead. And they can just break base now. With Deso, this, this tower is just going to melt. It is not long for this world. Navi didn't even use Glyph for the last uh, last fight, so they have it up for this one, but good luck defending this. Your only hope is to somehow force them to TP out. Yep, two Necro books popped. Here they go. They can just A-click. Even if they lose like three or four heroes, I think this tower goes down anyway. Desolator debuff deployed. The tower just melting to an army of Necronomicon warriors in the front lines. They spam. They gale from the sides to try and stop the aggression. In comes the Vost, he's baiting them to go on him. They always have that relocate out to safety if they need it. But he kills off one Necro Warrior, drops really low from the last will. Not dead yet, he does get a blade mount. He goes down though. This is bad. This is very bad. Diving funny to the base. Navi being overrun. They lose three. Three have also fallen for Sigma, but they've got an Aegis. Four down. This could be it. This could be the end of Navi's run in the winner's bracket. Four heroes dead. And Rax wow. in jeopardy. Sigma. That pure damage. You know? This is a little cheesy, but it works. It's it's very it, it's very common. This is what the Asian teams like to do, although it's they don't use the Potom and the Lich, the three core the for them. Pugna, Dragon Pugna, DK, and Venom. Yeah. Too. It's it's absolutely ridiculous, and it's extremely extremely difficult to deal with. And Navi, they just didn't draft a very high five main lineup. They got pretty much as much mileage out of Funic as you can ex as you can ask for, and yet they still weren't able to take any team fights. You know, it's I think it does go back to what we talked about the importance of the draft for Sigma, especially. Both right. games, they've had a good draft. A draft that really matches up well against what Navi has. And, and it works really well for them. Yeah, and that they're comfortable with. And, mm -hmm. you know, it is worth noting that they've gone for this Lich now twice. And the Lich just, it seems to give them that, like, kick and that jump start they need in the landing stage to get yeah. them snowballing in the It's very game. difficult to see his influence because it's, it's, 
it's in a lot of ways it's very subtle you get like one creep every two waves for yourself and deny them one but it adds up relocate on top he'll try to go here on fa mad he's probably dead he does have a gem this is a decent kill for navi and they'll get the gem but the turnaround comes now funnick's gonna fall kuroki in trouble too the desolator just chewing through his armor one more right click he gets out but they do keep the gem one for one and the gem secured mm, decent trade for for sigma there i'm surprised that venomaster didn't go for a ghost scepter um, considering Navi's lineup, like Slark can't do anything versus Ghost Scepter. I mean, minor damage from Dark Really Pack good against Bristle, Bristle, Bristle as well. Yeah. But they'll, looks they'll, like I imagine we'll see it soon if it goes on. Here they go for the next Rex. And Pugna does not have his Aegis anymore, but there is the Necro 3 out on the Venomancer. And, and by the way, Fata has the rune of many GGs. It's the double damage rune on the Dragonite with AC. And he's level 17, so he's got Big Daddy Frost Dragon on the loose. I don't even think the Bristleback can stand up against his right click anymore. Yeah, Slark has a Basher, but it may be too little too late. He has BKB Basher Shadow Blade, which is not bad for him by any means, and he's 6-3, and three, but Dandy. it's just not the right hero to deal with this. Looks like they want to wait for Venomancer. They are playing this extremely safe with this much at stake. Yeah, Effie Mad, a personal smoke to get back to the fight safely. And now Fata inching forward, creeping towards Navi's Tier 2 top. Miguel lurking as well. And they'll bring down the Creep Wave. The tower is now exposed. Navi cannot defend outside the base, but if they let them get to the base, I think they lose the Rex regardless. Even with a team wipe, they'll probably still lose the yep. base. No glyph up for two minutes either. Double damage rune is available. Fada's going to pop it now. Where's that dragon form? He goes straight on a boast. The damage is going to stack up quickly here. The Necronomicon Warriors bringing him low. Not bringing him down yet. Denny comes from, from the backside. Good damage done. One for one so far. But Kuroki in trouble. Two here on Pell again from Funic. Unbelievable performance from him, but it doesn't matter. Dragon Knight too big to fail and GG Sigma take Navi down and send in the lower bracket two to zero. That was a very phenomenal draft from Sigma in both of these games, but also I think it was a lackluster draft from Navi. Like it was very clear from their opener. Okay, we have Dragon Knight Venom. Yeah, Dragon Knight Venom, and then the Pugna pick. It's like okay, well, yeah, they they have to have seen that coming. I've seen that happen quite a few times. I saw it at D2L, and yes, the Asian teams. It, this that's pretty much exactly what the agent teams do. They do whatever in lanes, group up, take towers, and then snowball victory from there. Yeah, especially Vici Gaming loves that strategy. Right. We see DK do some other stuff, but Sigma just catch Navi off guard two games in a row. Great draft, but give them credit. Great execution as well. Yeah. Uh, Fada played really well this game. I think uh, Saksha could have died a little bit less, but whatever. Miggle also has some really good arrows. The one arrow on mid on the Bristleback when Fada ran ran past the Bristleback and killed the Wisp, that like r sealed the racks for them. I, I imagine we'll have an interview coming up soon with somebody from Sigma, but uh, before we get to that, Ben, Sigma moves on now. So it's going to be Sigma versus Alliance tomorrow mm -hmm. in the winner's bracket. In the loser's bracket, it's Fnatic versus Navi. What are your initial thoughts Look at those matches? I think that Fnatic and Navi both are the two weakest drafters in this tournament looking at it thus far. I think that a lot a lot of the win was due to just not a strong draft at the other team. So I think in terms of drafting skills, I think they're relatively equal. And Fnatic for some reason performs better against T1 teams than their record and their record against T2 teams should suggest. So. Um, I mean, I thought that they would perform better versus Alliance, but for as far as Fnatic, Navi, that, that one should be pretty close. I'd yeah. probably say like s maybe like a little under 60-40 uh, in favor of Navi. And then for Sigma versus Alliance, Alliance is going to be favorites. Maybe probably about the same. And I feel like Sigma is going to do their homework tonight. They'll see some, they'll be able to research, uh, or sorry, uh, Alliance, they'll, they'll see what Sigma has been doing. I mean, it's not anything new, though, is the thing. No, it's not. But I think Navi wasn't expecting this kind of a push strat, like at least not fully. Or maybe they're just arrogant. I thought they. I think it's just air. I, I, I mean, I don't even watch that. I mean, I watch a decent amount of Dota, but I, like, I know, I, I know this strat. Like, it's yeah. very clear cut. We, from we've the passed it like thirty times in right. you know, WPC. So I, it, it's not that they didn't see it coming. They had to see it coming. Yeah. So. But weren't ready for it. They weren't ready for it. And well, I mean, you could see it was a pretty. It wasn't completely one-sided, but it was pretty damn close. And yeah. once again, it's it's where Slark is very hit or miss. Can snowball out of control if the rest of the team is meshing well, but not like the kind of hero that can just carry the momentum. He didn't by move himself. around the map. He, he didn't have opportunities though. That's true. There weren't there. W 
Sigma are a lot more patient than Navi. Like in game one, we saw Navi not afraid to just dive towers for kills. Yeah, that's, that's true. And that's where Slark can get out of control. Sigma doesn't make that many mistakes in the early game. You have to like force them into bad positions, and Navi just didn't yeah. do that in either game. Wow. Well, we have our first upset of the tournament already on day one. Absolutely. And I think we actually do have an interview going on, so hopefully we can check that out. Is it in English? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it should be with Sigma, though. But we'll see. We'll see if we do have one. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, as for me, I think... Oh, looks like we do have an interview, so we'll head it off now to the you main stage. You just won the strongest opponent in Kyiv, I guess, uh, Navi. Do you feel confident right now, or was uh, that victory some unexpected? Um, I wouldn't say it's unexpected. We really trained hard for this. Um, we, we analyzed a lot of their picks and just tried to prepare. Um, and be able to outdraft them, which I think we kind of did in in the first game at least. And other than that, yeah, I'm just really happy right now. And yeah, I'm confident we can go further, but it's going to be really hard. We've got Alliance next, and that's going to be just as hard. And hopefully we, we will try our best for sure. At press conference, you said that uh, there is a hero who need nerf. Uh, was it Slark? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was uh, actually Invoker, but it's gone, uh, it was banned two times. Um, yeah, maybe we'll, we we get it in the next game, so our opponents get it in the next game. Uh, my opinion, it's really really strong, and uh, and I think Navi agrees. That's why they banned it. Okay, and any last words? Um, shout out to the to the Sigma fans, of course. Um, everyone supporting us. Uh, shout out to Dota Source, uh, German Dota Forum, and yeah, that's about it. And shout out to my team, of course. Thank you. Что ж, это был Фат. Он сказал, что в принципе. Well, yeah. interesting interview. Rather, man a few words, could say. They said that they were really prepared and that they, they, they outdrafted. Looked they looked really prepared. Yeah, so they, I mean, they must feel really good coming off that win, though. And Navi, now they're pushing to bring. This is yeah. something that Navi is very accustomed to, though. Losing on the first day or in the winner's bracket, dropping down on losers and coming back to the finals. And I'm sure the home crowd wishes that they well, would make it to the... Well, the game was like 11 to 1, and the crowd was like barely cheering. And then Navi gets one kill on a support, and they're like, yes! <laughs> you could tell they're behind Navi, yeah. which is fine. I mean, it's... It's the hometown advantage. So, well, with that being said, it's a wrap for day one of Star Ladder. Our first day in Kiev, casting. How do you feel? I think the games were... They were more exciting than I expected, actually. Um, even though they weren't very close, they were... There was a, a lot, lot, of, lot of kills, a lot of early action. Yeah, but it's a, it's a draft. Like, the drafts were so important in each of these four games. And... I didn't expect teams to get outdrafted this badly in some of the games. That's what I kind of dislike about this patch. I like it more when it comes down to just execution and individual play and mm -hmm. less to we have the better draft. I mean, it's, it's like 10 minutes for a draft, though. It, it like I feel like in 6.78, it was the same draft over and over, and it was just a waste of 10 minutes because it was like literally the same thing every game, right? Yeah. But in this, it's like you, you have to be good at drafting, and I think that's a very important part of Dota. It's like, yeah, you can be good at execution, but if you can't outdraft your opponents, you don't deserve the win either. Teach his own. I give you this one. Yeah, uh, I guess. I mean, I can see. I can. S I mean, I definitely like to see good execution too. But at the same time, like in six point seven eight, it wasn't that exciting because yeah. there were rarely upsets because the the better skill team won all the time. But now you get and, and often with the same boring strategy. To right. Be fair. <laughs> so I mean, th I mean, it's not that Vino, DK, and Pagna is a is isn't boring. It ends the game quicker though. That's the one. Even though it's cheesy, yeah. a little bit. It either wins quickly or generally loses. You have to give them credit, though. They they identified the strengths of the heroes in 6.79 and used it to the fullest. Yeah. So. And it was, the, you know, the, they kind of tipped their hand early as well, going Venno DK. I mean, not that they had to go fully for that draft, mm -hmm. but... It's, it's such a flexible lineup, though, yeah. is the thing. It leans that direction. Though. Do you think that those important heroes in the in the games today need, it, need a ban? Or need a, sorry, a nerf? I, DK may be a small one. I don't think he's outrageously overpowered. What about Venno Pugna? Uh, I don't think Venno's maybe a little bit, but I don't think he's that bad. I don't think Pugna is like really strong in the right lineup, right? But he's not broken on his own. Like Alk mm -hmm. is good in every lineup. Pugna needs the right pieces around him, and he needs a good laning stage. And he needs good play style yeah. too. I think. I that I don't think you can give that combo away though. Pugna DK and like you mentioned, the Venno fits in really mm. well there too. It's it's too much.
Yeah, I think unless like unless you like know it's coming or like force them to go for the first two picks. Like, like if they pick DK, you should ban Pugno on the second stage. Mm -hmm. Seems to me. It's just a synergy in between all those things combined. Like you have the DK damage on the tower, you have the Pugna Blast, you have the Ven Awards, you have the Necro Summons, and you have the Mech. Like there's so many things working against you. You're like you have to run into that, and then that's not even that's excluding the other heroes, the Chain Frost, the Poison Nova. And let's not forget that Navi had like. Uh, well, especially fighting. Amazing execution. Yeah. Three, four, they, hero they, they every played fight. amazingly well. Is but, the thing. but it wasn't enough. Because yeah. that's just, it's a death ball. Right. It really is. It's like going past Colossi with some stalkers in StarCraft Two back when that was really strong. Colossi versus Zerglings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fair fight, man. <laughs> it's, true. Just a, it's just a massacre, to be honest. So you think that... Going into tomorrow, I think, I think as long as Lions doesn't get outdrafted, they will win for sure. Mm -hmm. That's... How I'm feeling now. What about Fnatic versus Navi? Um, Fnatic looked the weakest out of the four teams today, I feel. I would definitely say so, too. Like, even though Navi lost, they executed really well. But I feel like Fnatic didn't draft that well. And, and they, they played well. well. Yeah, that's, that's, I totally feel you with that one. Because Navi, they drafted poorly, but they played really well. Fnatic, yeah. as you said, drafted poorly and played poorly. And Alliance and Sigma. I say, like, Sigma didn't play they played like, as well, well as alliance. they didn't play amazing yeah they didn't play i think alliance played amazing yeah and I then agree. i think that sigma played well i'm with you there buddy yeah okay well we come to a consensus we have and on that note guys we're going to wrap up today's broadcast we should be starting rebroadcast soon hopefully for y'all but day one of star ladder season k-pop dose is rubbing off on you you said y'all y'all i say y'all but i don't say it with like that southern twang y'all y'all He's got a real authentic accent. He, like, toned it down for TI3, but we'll be hearing more of it soon back in, uh, back in L.A. But, guys, for now, it is a wrap for day number one of Star Ladder Season 8. Nobody's eliminated yet, but tomorrow somebody's going home. So I'm LD. He's Merlini. From here in Kiev, we're signing off. For the first time ever in the eighth season of Legendary Star Ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set.